In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I am a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever been in you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you for your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have 
mercy upon us, Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 18th Sunday after Trinity comes from Deuteronomy chapter 10. And now Israel... What does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good? Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that is in it, Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all peoples, as you are this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you were not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Stand.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory be to thee, o Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did, any, did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I spent most of the preparation time for this sermon just staring at the words of the text. And it's been a few times that I've preached this, this particular portion of Matthew now, usually picking either the first half or the second to focus on. And on the surface, they seem to be two very different messages, but they are always part of the same gospel lesson, so I know that there is a common theme or a common message between them. So I stared at them, and I thought of them, about them, and I tried to imagine on preaching them both as one message with a single meaning all overall. And that's why I spent so much time staring at the screen because the two segments, they approach the same issue, but from different starting points and in different ways. And it's taken a minute to focus on the real issue here, but when you take everything into account in this gospel, the real point of the whole thing is what God wants of us people. The first half of this gospel lesson is about the question of which commandment of the law is the greatest or the most important. And you know the answers, of course. You've, the first command, uh, commandment Jesus mentions is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And quoted, not precisely, but certainly to the same end, we are to love God. God wants us to love him with everything we are and everything we are about doing or thinking or saying. Then Jesus gives then the second most important commandment. It is to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. The word for love here in this command is agape. It's the same word for the love that we are to have for God. And the same word which the New Testament always uses for the love which God has for us. It's not specifically a love of emotion. It is a love of commitment and sacrifice. The sort of love that one must exercise if one is going to love God with all your will and intellect and actions and thought, it's also the kind of love that makes sense if you are to love your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't make sense to command love for the neighbor if all one thinking about is how we feel about our neighbor. Why would God command us merely to feel good about our neighbor? And warm thoughts, alone don't really do anything for our neighbor. No, the love God is commanding of us is that overriding concern for our neighbor, for his or her welfare both in this life and for everlasting life in body and soul. We are to care about one another as much as we care about ourselves. If we did, just think about how much better this world would work There'd be no hunger because we wouldn't be resting until we knew that every neighbor had something to eat. There'd be no war because we couldn't imagine doing anything to our neighbor, anything that we would not want done to us, and they would not be able to imagine doing it either. We'd put the best construction on everything, everything that our neighbor does or says just as we would expect them to understand what we do, what we say in a generous and in a positive light. We think about how often we hear about lawsuits in society today. I mean, how would we sue one another with this type of love? I think we'd seek the most equitable solutions to our disputes, and no one would have to tell us what was right because we would always be concerned that our neighbors came out just as well in any situation as we would like to. Competition, you know, we think about competition, that would be something entirely different. It would not be that we wouldn't want to compete, but we would want our neighbor to excel as much as we excel. I mean, true sportsmanship. We would design our competition to bring out the best in each of us for the joy of the game, not just for the thrill of victory. And cheating would be impossible. 
We'd never want our neighbor to suffer some disadvantage. We wouldn't gloat. Because even gloating in victory, it would evaporate because we would find no joy in lording our success over a neighbor as we would want them to be just as happy with the outcome as we are. Now, could you imagine such a world in politics? I can't. No negative ads, no mudslinging. We could hardly imagine campaigning at all since our only goal would be the genuine welfare of another. Those deceits and dirty tricks, those hidden agendas that we all see in modern politics, they would just simply find no foothold in such a world as this. There'd be no profiteering in the market where we would gain while our neighbor would lose. And our entire purpose for being would be to live out the love that we have for God by living out love for one another. You might could call it heaven. And it may well be what heaven will be like for those who go there, but that's not the world we live in here and now. For we live in a world of sin, a world that is marked by greed and selfishness and putting numero uno first, taking every advantage that you can because you need it. That's what the other guy is doing. And the will of God is that we love him in such a way that we put his will first in what we do, what we think, what we say. And we do our best by living as though we were in that world, the world where our neighbor is just as important as we are. Because you know what? In God's eyes, he is. The second half of the lesson today is where Jesus asks them a question in return. It's a simple question, but it turns the whole discussion over on its head. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? Now, for the Pharisees, this was a Sunday school question and answer. They say, the son of David. But the real piece to the puzzle in all of this, Jesus is getting at when he says, then how does David in the spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? And then the text tells us that they could not, it wasn't that they just couldn't answer the question, but they were afraid to ask him any more questions, presumably because they would get embarrassed. Hey, the people are listening. Our questions and attacks, they're not working. They don't know what to say. The Pharisees were at a loss. And the reason they couldn't answer the question Jesus asked is that they're faulty theological prejudices, they prohibited them from actually being...
At this time, I would like to turn your attention to the insert that you will find in your bulletin as I invite you to sing uh, one of the uh, many LWML hymns that are actually available that we join in as appropriate in this hymn about serving the Lord with gladness as you will find in the bulletin insert. So sing along with us together. as his own to enjoy the blessings of his love and grace will at last in glory meet us face to face onward then for Jesus let this be our aim Serve the Lord with gladness, glorify his name. Serve the Lord with gladness, he gave us command to proclaim his gospel now in every land. So that fellow sinners may like us be blessed, leading them to Jesus, we can serve him best. Onward then for Jesus, let this be our aim. Serve the Lord with gladness, for name. Serve the Lord with gladness, there's no greater joy than to serve the Master, work in His employ. As we build His kingdom, angels to rejoice. Over every sinner brought to hear his voice. Onward then for Jesus, let this be our aim. Serve the Lord with gladness, glorify. Friends, once a year we like to take time to call attention to the work and dedication of the members of the Lutheran uh, Women's Missionary League. Uh, there is, this is a small, not as large as it used to be, it is, it is not as, uh, as numerous in members as it used to be, though we pray that that changes, but this, this is one of the most dedicated groups within the church, one of the most dedicated group of, of Christians serving together, women serving together for the purpose and work of the mission of the church. And so it is our, our, with joy that this Sunday we call attention to their work and thank the members of, of this organization as they continue to work to the ends of bringing the gospel to all nations, uh, serving the Lord with gladness. And as we consider the work that the LWML does, and as we draw attention to their efforts and to the uh, dedication of its members, we remember that the purpose of everything within the church is to glorify the name of Christ. And so today, I want to show our solidarity with this dedicated organization who, speaking from personal experience, has been assisted and helped in so many ways in my time in seminary, um, that we show our, our solidarity and our encouragement to the members of LWML as we stand uh, before we continue with the prayers of the church to to speak and recite together the pledge of the LWML. 
and we remain standing for prayer. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. And let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, bless your church here in this place and scattered throughout the world. Fill all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with his love, that they might strive diligently to love you, one another, and all their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, enrich all pastors in Christ in all speech and knowledge that they would preach the gospel in its purity and administer the sacraments according to Christ's word and institution. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, you know how Satan prowls like a roaring lion, seeking to devour your children. By the power of your word and spirit, protect and defend those who are under Satan's attacks. Send your holy angels to be with them that the evil foe may have no power over them. Lord, in your mercy. Generous Lord, we thank you for your delight in giving us all good gifts. Continue to bless us in both body and soul. Grant us generous hearts that we would support your ministry and mission among us and around the world with our tithes and offerings. Bless especially the work of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League as they continue to facilitate the work of ministry in your holy church. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, give guidance, wisdom, and safety to Donald, our president, William, our governor, and to all who make and judge our laws. Bless all civil servants as they carry out their offices and protect them in the line of duty. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, continue to be merciful to all those who are suffering under the burden of any illness or ailment of body, soul, or spirit. Strengthen and heal them according to your will and bless all the hands that care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant that we would always be glad to go to the house of the Lord, where we are fed and strengthened by your Son's body and blood at the holy altar. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we would receive the blessed sacrament in repentance and faith and to our abundant blessing. Lord, in your mercy. God of God, Lord of Lords, we give you thanks for all who have preceded us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Sustain us in that same faith as we wait with them for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we would be found guiltless on the day of judgment. Lord, in your mercy, these things and whatever else we need, we place into your hands, O Father, for you have instructed us to call upon you Hear our prayer for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. <clears throat> it is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. 
bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Praise the Almighty, my soul, adore Him. Yes, I will
I have one quick announcement this morning. Um, didn't make it in the bulletin because we didn't find out until after it was printed, but uh, the family and friends are having a visitation. Shirley Horn's sister passed away, and there is a, a gathering here today at 5 o'clock for family and friends. So uh, if you want to uh, join them for that, uh, just wanted everybody to be aware of that. Shirley Horn's sister has passed away. And also would encourage you all to, if you have any announcements, please put them in the bulletin. And if they don't make it in the bulletin, please see one of us so that we can make an announcement to the uh, congregation. Have a good week. Thank you.